Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Drome here in New York City. As part of the Soul Factory Presents Independent Soul Showcase here at Drome, tonight singer-songwriter Algebra Blissett will be performing selections off her brand new record, Recovery, which is on the Purpose Music Group imprint. It took her five years to put this record together, and over those five years, she's been very busy. She was in a musical called Rebirth, as well as she collaborated with some very high-profile artists, ranging from Esperanza Spaulding, as well as Anthony David. We sat down earlier, and we talked about this brand-new record. We talked about her time growing up, still living in Atlanta, what inspires her to write, as well as her moving forward musically in this industry called music. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Miss Algebra Blissett live here at Drome as part of the Soul Factory Presents Showcase here at Drome here in New York City. Algebra, welcome to New York. Welcome back, and congratulations on your brand new record, Recovery. Thank you very much. This was five years in the making, and we want to know, what should your music fans expect on this new project? It's definitely a little different from Purpose, the first record. Um, this sophomore record of mine, I strategically chose the producers that I wanted to work with, which was Kwame Holland, El Timo, Brian Michael Cox, and Shannon Sanders. And um, we, I kept it with them, and we talked about it. We talked about topics that I wanted to cover, and um, the title of the album came from when Kwame and I were recording records, and we found that a lot of the songs had something to do with recovery, you know, and not necessarily recovery from heartache, but just different areas of that. Your video is very intriguing also. Thank it's you. got a little bit of the um, Lucy and Schroeder kind of <laughs> from, from the Peanuts. Yeah, absolutely. How did that come about? And you're also doing some acrobatics in the video also. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing some aerial silks, you know, they call it, or aerial fabrics, depending on where you, you know, take it. But we came up with that concept because the song Nobody But You is pretty much a girl confessing her desire and reiterating how much she loves her guy. And um, we thought it would be kind of cute and cool for the guy to just really not know. And the perfect cartoon is Lucy and Shoulder from Charlie Brown because he has no idea of her infatuation for him. You've been very busy also. We talked earlier. You've been on quite a few featured guest appearances. I mean, you were on. You actually co-wrote Black Gold for Esperanza Spaulding. What was that like? Um, it was good. You know, it's just like writing with, um, writing with your friends. Also co-wrote Forevermore and um, Light the Universe with Vivian and, you know, Anthony. So... It's, it's always fun to be able to create with people that you respect. You know, a lot of what you're doing is so missing from, you know, the music industry. You're writing a lot of your, your songs and collaborating, getting your ideas. Tell me about the process of writing your songs, because your, your new single is kind of semi-autobiographical. 
<laughs> That's funny. Um, the process varies. There's no one process in writing. Sometimes the words come first. Sometimes the music comes first. Um, sometimes the idea is there and there is no melody. There's no anything. It's just lyrics. So it's, or it's just an idea and you just, you create, you know, it's like you, you make a baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, growing up in Atlanta, you pretty much were in a hybrid of the deep, deep South gospel music and also what we call crunk music. <laughs> Tell me about the, the origins of, of algebra growing up. It's funny that you say that. You say gospel and crunk. That is hilarious. Um, it From the South, that's what we have. Like we, we're, The South is known for dance music. It's known for country music. It's known for gospel music. And... That's really what I strangely embodied, and I did not separate myself from either genre, which, of course, with all of that comes funk, comes jazz, and all these other different types of um, music. So it was, a, it was a, a hotbed of just good music. I understand, you know, growing up, that you really did not want to be a vocalist, but music ended up calling you. Absolutely. I was surrounded by music with my mom, my grandmother, my great-grandmother. My mom is a minister, and she's a bassist as well. So I grew up in there, like, grew up around them traveling, quartet music and everything. So my mom played bass in the quartet group. And my dad, he's just a mechanic. He knows one song. And, I mean... He sings the mess out of that one Marvin Gaye song, too. But he's not, he wasn't into the music thing. He just supported my mom. My mom supported him. And um, I just kind of ran from it. I wanted to be like a showgirl or something, you know, be in theater. You know, I didn't want to necessarily be out front. I wanted to be a part of something big. You know, I wanted to be um, a part of the family of something because that's what I knew. I was a part of my family who was involved in music. I want to ask you something, because I've interviewed a lot of great, great soul musicians that have come out of Atlanta. I mean, Speech from Arrested Development, Avery Sunshine, Anthony David, NDRE. What is it about Atlanta that really is like a hotbed of great music that still, it, people are still coming out of Atlanta? Um, Atlanta is, it's, a, it's the country and the city all together. It's a good place for you want a little some grass, some trees, good parks. And then it's also a good place to really get a good city life. You can make money there and you can spend money there. It's funny how some things stay on your mind. It's funny how some moments make time. I remember when we made, we became 
know your career you know you started off on a major label now you've pretty much come full circle and now doing the independent artist what is it about being an independent artist now as I guess putting your music out there and connecting with your fans versus working with the label major labels back in the day um it's it's different you know it's um you I find myself right now being more of a businesswoman along with being the artist that creates. So I would say that's my biggest difference now. You know, a lot of times on bigger labels, you don't know who's doing what. And for me, I always want to be able to say, well, thank you for doing this. But a lot of times you don't even know who's the art director of the album or you won't know who's, you know, a lot of artists don't even know who's mixing their album. So I think when you're doing independent things, you have more of an on hands. Um, approach to your music you know what's going on and um, different things matter to you then you started off doing a lot of background and touring with Monica as well as Belial and how did you segue from becoming someone who accompanies and backing up and doing major tours to starting your own career I still do it if anyone were to call me right now and need me I do it, especially if I have the time. I enjoy working with people. I enjoy working with people that I respect vocally, musically, just creatively, period. Um, it's different. Like I say, it's backgrounds and you're up front. You know, there's upstage and downstage. And um, no matter what I'm doing, I try to do my best and do my best job, whatever that job is. One of the things that you have done in between your debut record and your new record is you were part of a musical called Rebirth. Tell me about that. That's another side of the entertainment business that is a different kind of skill because you're doing theater versus singing every night with a five-piece band. Right, right, exactly. Rebirth um, had Lynn Whitfield, nephew Tommy, Q Parker from 112. It was a very good experience, first of all, because it was at home, and we, we debuted that at the Fox Theater. And it was the story behind it was great. And singing and dancing is just a part of what we do as artists. You know, we, we, had, we had like 12-hour days of rehearsals and um, learning music, different types of music, because in that particular musical, it wasn't just a gospel song. It was like we had like really great jazz records in there, really good classical records. So it was a lot of vocal rest that I had to do to prepare for it. So it's just a different monster than being on the road, singing your own songs and, uh, you know, talking to the crowd. Here you got big lights, big stage and one, two steps, you know, eight counts, 16 counts. And it's the same thing. It, it teaches a lot of discipline. 
What was the concept and what was Rebirth about? Rebirth was about finding your own spirituality, finding your own religion, whatever it is, finding whatever it is that you believe in and following that, not being subjected to what everyone else wants you to believe, but to find your own belief and to find your own personal relationship with whatever higher being that you believe in. Yeah, this is it. I got one more. I'm okay. good. Um, Come on. What's next for algebra? What is next for algebra? I do not read poems, and I don't know what's in the future. However, I do have this expectation of great things. You know, I have goals, and I want to succeed in anything that I put my hands in. I look forward to, of course, having a family one day. I think the majority of women want that. But I look forward to selling records and meeting new people every day, writing new songs, being in more musicals, um, expanding my creativity completely. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report reporting live here at Drome. I'd like to personally thank Ms. Algebra Blissett for her time, as well as the staff and management here at Drome, as well as a mad shout out to Rich Johnson and the Soul Factory for putting on this wonderful event, as well as George Little John at Purpose Music for arranging my interview with Algebra. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Till next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace.